Hey Chicago Med fans, a season five plotline has Dr. Ethan Choi and nurse April Sexton facing possible fertility problems. But how accurate is the information? Stay tuned. First, a little background on Nurse Sexton. April hasn't always had fertility problems. Back in season two, April conceives with ex-fiance Tate Jenkins while taking birth control pills. Presumably, the pills were made less effective because of medication she was taking for her tuberculosis. Unfortunately, she goes on to have a miscarriage and a DNC. Later, she and Ethan get together, and in episode two of season five, Ethan tells her that she would make the best mom ever. You make the best mom ever. In episode six, we see April doing a home pregnancy test. For some reason, she decides to do this in the public bathroom at work, but okay. The test comes out negative. It is unclear whether she and Ethan have actually been trying to get pregnant. However, she does look disappointed. By episode seven, Ethan has gone full out trying to help a somewhat reluctant April to conceive. Here is where we can start answering some accuracy questions. Ethan makes April a frittata, which follows the guidelines for a Mediterranean diet. Does following a Mediterranean diet help ovarian health? Women who are overweight can have problems with ovulation. Weight loss can increase the chance for ovulation in overweight women. Mediterranean diet is considered a healthy diet that might assist with weight loss, so this could improve fertility in overweight, non-ovulating women. But April is definitely not overweight. For women who are being treated with IVF, a Mediterranean diet was found in one study to improve the chances for pregnancy, but didn't help in another study. There has never been any evidence that a Mediterranean diet improves fertility or ovarian health in normal weight ovulating women like April. So I am going to rate this as inaccurate. Next, Ethan makes a fertility chart to track April's ovulation. Is this what I think it is? A uh, fertility chart. This is helpful for couples who are just starting out trying to conceive. We have pretty good evidence that having intercourse close to the time of ovulation, what Ethan calls the fertile window, we are in your fertile window, will improve the chance for pregnancy. So rate this as accurate. What else does Ethan do? I also put some folic acid in there. You know? Does folic acid prevent birth defects? Actually, folic acid, also known as folate, does reduce the chances for one type of birth defect known as neural tube defects, which includes spina bifida. All women who are pregnant or attempting pregnancy should take a thousand micrograms of folic acid every day to reduce their risk for a baby with neural tube defects. Infertility TV accuracy rating? Excellent. April starts getting stressed out by all of Ethan's conception planning. Ethan tells her he will mellow out a bit. Two episodes later, however, we see April at an appointment with her ob Dr. Pachevsky. It is revealed that April has undergone some fertility testing. It seems like Dr. Pachevsky has performed a good basic evaluation, which included checking April's thyroid. April had an HSG or hysterosalpingogram. This test actually gives us information about the uterus and the fallopian tubes. Dr. Pachevsky doesn't say anything about the uterus. This was an important omission since April had a miscarriage in a DNC, which can sometimes result in scar tissue. We can see from the HSG image, however, that the uterus is normal. She does tell April that her tubes are not blocked. This is good. April had tuberculosis, which can sometimes cause the tubes to be blocked. So far, so good. But then she drops the bombshell. Your AMH and antral follicle count are low and your FSH is high. Ovarian reserve testing, which is used to estimate the number of viable eggs left in a woman's ovaries, is an extremely important part of the infertility evaluation. There are three tests that are used to help assess a woman's reserve of eggs, and Dr. Pachevsky did all of them. EMH and FSH are blood tests. The antral follicle count is performed during an ultrasound. Fortunately for April, all three tests were abnormal. Dr. Pachevsky gives her the correct diagnosis and tells her that spontaneous pregnancy isn't impossible. April, however, thinks that this means something different. Early onset menopause? Early onset menopause, also known as premature menopause or 
primary ovarian insufficiency is when a woman stops having periods and has high FSH levels before the age of 40. This is a different problem with a much different prognosis. Early onset menopause affects about 1% of women. It is extremely rare for pregnancy to occur and fertility treatments like IVF do not improve the chances for pregnancy. Low ovarian reserve is more common, especially in women who have infertility. Spontaneous pregnancies can and do occur. Fertility treatments like IVF can still be attempted, though the success rates are not as good. A big reason for the lower success rate is explained by Dr. Pachevsky. With low ovarian reserve, you may not be responsive. What she means here is that IVF relies on the use of fertility medications to get many eggs to mature. Women with low ovarian reserve don't respond as well to fertility medications. They have more IVF attempts canceled and on average are able to get fewer eggs. So, Dr. Pachevsky is 100% on the money and gets an infertility TV double thumbs up. My only complaint is that she should have tried harder to explain to April that she does not have early onset menopause and offer a referral to a fertility specialist. Hmm, who could they get to play an IVF expert on Chicago Med? It should be somebody who lives in the Chicago area where they film, who has hundreds of hours of experience in front of the camera talking about fertility, and maybe the most popular fertility doctor YouTube channel in North America. Hashtag put Dr. Morris on Chicago Med. Before you go, please be sure to like this video. If you have a suggestion for a future episode, leave it in the comments and subscribe to Infertility TV right now. It's like having a fertility specialist in your phone.